Craig was storm now in New York. Yeah. yeah. We're figuring what, five to seven inches. See this, Jim? Down in the New York area, the low is just offshore, and uh, oh, we're getting snow in New York City, and uh, you said five to seven inches forecast? Forecast in New York. Yeah. Good place to stay away from today. Yeah. So this, yeah. this is an important uh, room, I guess. Well, this is where, if you want to know what's going on anywhere, why this is where you find out. And uh, the, uh, you've got some upper air charts here, too, somewhere. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Well, I used to work in that service. Where does this information come from? Well, all over the country. and uh, Basically, all the maps are coming from the uh, Canadian Meteorological Center in Montreal. Uh, the maps are all produced by computer. Uh, now, these ones here, no, all the Canadian ones anyway. So these ones, the upper air map, they take uh, the soundings uh, twice a day in the morning and then again in the evening at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. The computer takes all the numbers, analyzes the charts, and the charts are transmitted uh, via Fexil media. Fexil. Yeah. The question is, uh, you said upper air map. What's that mean? Okay, well, this, this, this one is what's happening on the surface. These lines are surface pressures. And the blue line is a cold front. Red line is a warm front intersection with the ground. This is up at a pressure of 700 millibars. That's why 10,000 feet. 10,000 10, feet. And up there, your pressure patterns are slightly different. Your activity is slightly different. You've got some frontal zones shown in there that don't show on the surface map. Then when you go still higher, 500 millibars, which is what, 25,000? 18. 18, yeah. right. 18,000 feet. You've got a slightly different pattern again. If you notice, for instance, on the surface map, one of the low pressure is in the north there, is showing, but it's a much more intense low when you get up higher. Where's the uh, Where's the computer? It's in, uh, it's it's in my job. So the, but you must have a receiving station where the map, how do the maps get here? Oh, okay. Machine. I'll show you. Okay. Uh, they uh, the okay. In the old days when I was in the bed service, you had to plot the map yourself with the signals, but now the maps come in complete. Oh, no, this is the all, yeah. all plotted. And, uh, and there they're coming out of the machine, and uh, that cranks forward a fraction of an inch per minute sort of drill. Or, yeah, and you just rip them off, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's a wet, it's a wet paper, and it, it's, uh, it burns the paper. Oh, yeah, this is one of these heat yeah. things, yeah, on a, on a moist paper, right? Moist paper, right. And that's constantly running 24 hours a day, I guess, eh? Right? Every time there's a map coming, yeah, right. Almost 24 hours. The signals on which the maps are based are taken every six hours at stations all over the world, actually, and. Uh, fed into the system, and uh, maps are produced every six hours uh, from those signals, and then they're transmitted out in time to be of use to offices like this. Well, I was a man before I was yeah. what's, what's a weather radar? Well, it's a, a, it's a, a radar that detects precipitation. Yeah. So what you see on there is not clouds. It's the only uh, precipitation, whatever, falls, snow, rain, whatever. Well, it's very useful for uh, short range, uh, short, short term forecast. And also for uh, you know, pilots that want to know the weather in case of a, you know, severe thunderstorms at times, uh, top of the storms, or anything. What would a thunderstorm look like on that? Well, so, uh, it looks like a, a probably a big blob. Anyway, uh, uh, with a uh, much uh, darker gray. Normally, you show a lot intense. Now, the darker the gray, the more uh, return that is the uh, that the radar gets. Okay, the bigger the drop, that's and so on. So that's why, sure, it would show darker on that. So, uh, or you know, it could come in a line or uh, you know, whatever. But it'll show at different altitude as well. Okay, a thunderstorm will show up to uh, 39,000 feet or 11 kilometers on on this. This one works in kilometers. It's got uh, 11 kilometers, 36 miles per feet. This instrument here, which is a wind direction, wind speed, and a wind recorder. It records everything that's on there. 
Uh, we have here a solometer to help us determine the heights of the clouds, mainly for aviation uh, purposes, but also for uh, help us in, you know, in the forecasting business as well. So this is a laser solometer and uh, gives us the base of the clouds. This is the uh, remote temperature indicator, temperature and dew point. So it directly reads the, uh, the you know the outside temperature. Present minus sixteen point nine. What's uh, what's that for? Dew, you said. The dew point, which is the uh, the temperature at which you have to cool uh, your your air to uh, to get saturation. That is, you, you'll you'll see your water vapor water vapor become visible. Is there fog or whatever clouds? If you cool that down to minus 21, you'll probably have fog forming outside. Okay, that's obviously not a clock up on top. It's 1626, and right now it's 1115 in the morning. What's yeah, this is the uh, universal time. Okay. For uh, Greenwich Mean Time? Well, it's no, it's no longer Greenwich. They don't keep Greenwich now. It's, uh, it's called universal time, UTC. So right now it's 426 in the center of... Uh, yeah, in England and uh, France mm. and so on. And this is called a bear graph from here. It just gives the, uh, the tendency of the uh, of the pressure, whether it's rising or falling. Puts out a little graph like this over a three-day period. You can, uh,